Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Russell, and I'm delighted to be here. I'm a retired school teacher. Uh, I taught second, third, and fourth in Fairbanks, and uh, I um, have lived there for 40 years, and then I moved down here just last year. Because of this election season, I think it's very important to let everyone know about elections and the women's suffrage movement that allowed women to vote. So we're going to be reading Marching with Aunt Susan by Claire Rudolph Murphy. Papa took my brothers hiking, but not me. Strenuous exercise is not for girls, Bessie, he told me. You're not strong enough, Ernie said. It's not ladylike, Charlie added. I can ride my bicycle faster than anyone on the block, I told my brothers, even you. Girls shouldn't ride bicycles either, Charlie said, and they left without me. Inside, Mama bustled around preparing for a party. I'm strong enough to hike, I said. Papa wouldn't take me along just because I'm a girl. You can help me get ready for the suffrage tea, Mom said. Aunt Mary will be arriving soon with our guest of honor, Miss Susan B. Anthony. Suffrage? I'm the one who's suffering. I picked up the newspaper and stored it, stared at Miss Anthony's photo. She looks like a crabby old lady. A crabby old lady who has fought 50 years for women's rights, Mama said. Even when people threw garbage at her and called her names. At the tea, everybody swarmed around Miss Anthony. They called her Aunt Susan, even though they weren't related to her. She spoke about the long fight for equal rights. She told us that children should grow up in a world where both men and women were free. Later, Aunt Mary introduced me to Aunt Susan. Why can't girls do the same things as boys, I asked her. She shook her head. When I was your age, my teacher thought only boys were smart enough to learn long division. That's not right, I said. Come to the rally in San Francisco tomorrow, Bessie. Women's votes can help change the world. Golden Gate Auditorium was so crowded that I could barely breathe. Aunt Susan stood on a stage surrounded by hundreds of roses. Her voice thundered across the hall. The votes of all the people, including women with men, will surely bring about the wisest and best government in the world. I pulled a white handkerchief out of my purse and joined the sea of flags waving in the air. The day after the rally, I rode my bicycle over to my best friend Rita's house. You should have heard Aunt Susan speaking yesterday, I told her. My papa says ladies shouldn't speak in public, Rita said. Aunt Susan says that girls are just as smart as boys. We should get to help make decisions too. Papa decides everything in our family, Rita said. That's not right. I looked at my best friend. Someday I want to vote. Let's see if we can help out at the suffrage headquarters. All through the summer, Rita and I wrote letters, licked envelopes, and painted posters. As we worked, we listened to women talk. 
Men decided everything. They even decide whether we should get to vote. Men decide how the children are raised. Men decide how the household money is spent. I don't understand, I said to Rita. I get to spend my allowance any way I want. And Mama makes the decisions about lots of our purchases. Not in our house, Rita shook her head. Papa keeps track of every penny. The week before the election, we visited a factory in San Francisco. Rows and rows of girls sat hunched over sewing in a dark room. Aunt Susan encouraged them to come out to our suffrage parade. Afterward, a girl walked up. Me and my sister did some extra sewing to help the campaign. She handed Aunt Susan two dimes. If women win the vote, will I be able to go to school? I couldn't imagine not learning how to read and write. I leaned against the wall and tried to catch my breath. Back at headquarters, I asked Aunt Susan why those girls didn't go to school. Many parents can't make enough money to feed their families, she told me, so the children have to work. Can women getting the vote change that, I asked. Aunt Susan nodded. We can work to pass laws that will help adults and children. I dumped out all the coins in my purse and handed them to her. If those girls can give money, I should too. Later, I painted a picture of the factory girl on a banner for the parade. Rita printed the letters. Sunday afternoon before the vote, Rita, Mama, and I marched along carrying our banner. The crowd cheered as we sang new lyrics to My Country, Tis of Thee. Our country now from thee, claim we our liberty in freedom's name, guarding homes, altar fires, daughters of patriots, sires, their zeal our own inspires, justice to claim. Then men began shouting, women belong in the kitchen, girls belong at home. Rita's father appeared and dragged her away. No daughter of mine will parade in the streets. A boy splattered an egg down the front of my white dress. What do you want to be, a man, he yelled. When I stood frozen, watching the oozy yellow stain spread until Mama picked up Rita's end of the banner and we marched on. When he heard what had happened, Papa bought me a new white dress. If only it was that easy to win the election. Monday after school, Mama and I stood at the ferry launch and held up a new sign. Remember your daughters. Vote yes on referendum number six. I couldn't tell if I got more pats on the head or grumbles from the men walking by but Mama said it only matters how they vote tomorrow. The day after the election, my, brother, my brothers raced me home from school. Charlie grabbed the newspaper off the front porch. Women lose the vote, he shouted. I leaned my bicycle against the house and snatched the newspaper out of his hand. What are you so mad about? asked Ernie. Someday you'll get to vote, 
and you don't even care. Mama is as smart as Papa, and I'm as smart as you. We should get to vote, too. Mama came out and picked up my bench, my bicycle. Aunt Susan says that a bicycle gives women freedom. Teach me how to ride, Bessie. It's hard to do, I said, sitting down on the steps. When you first tried to ride, you kept falling and scraping your knee, she reminded me. But you didn't give up. Finally, I showed her what to do, how to mount the bicycle, balance, pedal, and drag her feet to stop. I guess that was before they had brakes. When Papa arrived home, Mama was wobbling up and down the street. I'm sorry about the election, Bessie, he said. Girls should be allowed to do the same things as boys, Papa. Why don't we go hiking this Saturday, he asked. Thanks, Papa, I said, grabbing his hand. And Sunday, there's a rally for the next suffrage campaign. Come march with Mama and me. It's a wonderful book if you want to come and borrow it. That was Marching with Aunt Susan by Claire Rudolph Murphy, read to you by Marilyn Russell. This year, all Alaskan kids are invited to vote. Between October 19th and November 3rd, 2020, you can come to any public library location to pick up a ballot and choose which book character you want to be president. Thank you. Happy voting. Happy reading.